Hey guys, welcome back to the Wall Street Bull Anthony here. I hope you're all doing well and staying safe out there. Massive shout out and thank you to every single one of you who have subscribed to the channel. Look at that number up there, 26,000 subscribers and growing. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. I love talking with everyone in the comments and the community tab. So if you're new to the channel, please make sure you smash the subscribe button down there and turn on that little bell notification as well. Because as you can see right here, I love documenting my journey with investing, be through cryptos, dividend stocks, growth stocks, talking about passive income, building financial freedom. And yes, my goal at the end of the day is to build generational wealth. So come along with this incredible journey. It's been insane so far and we are so early. We are just getting started, everyone. All right, guys. Also, if you can give this video a thumbs up, what's a straight through would really help me push this channel out to a lot more people. The YouTube algorithm is magic when you do that. All right, guys, let's get straight into it. Little disclaimer, I am not a financial advisor. Please do your own research and due diligence. Please do not take what I say as financial advice. Jump on all the websites I've recommended in all my videos. They'll give you a lot of confidence before investing in particular. Me, my golden rule is I only invest what I can afford to lose. Yes, we don't like to lose, but you have to set a limit because you can lose money like that, all right? Especially in crypto, so please be careful. Do your own research. Don't take what I say as financial advice. All right, guys, now the formalities are out of the way. Straight in the community tab. Let's just have a look here. So I put in my top picks for crypto. XRP, XDC, VChain, Reef, UFO Gaming, XYO, Hedera, Yield Guild Games, YGG, Gala, Matic, and Ocean Protocol for Web3. So they're my top picks, guys. And uh, I just wanted to share them because they're the ones that I'm basically going to be adding into my portfolios and buying more of, of course. Let's go straight into CoinSpot. This is where I buy my cryptos in Australia, by the way. There is a referral link below. Please feel free to use that. Uh, you can get $10 in Bitcoin if you use that. Please do your own research though, be very careful. Let's get straight into it, guys. Bitcoin's down 0.78%, guys, to 71,000 Australian dollars. Australian dollars, I'm just clarifying. I do all the other stuff in the apps and stuff like that in US dollars. So we'll get into that in a second, all right? Now, let's get straight into it. Ethereum, $6,300. BNB, $862. Solana's $277. Cardano's $1.99. XRP, I've got some interesting stuff on that one today, guys. $8.23. Polkadot, $42. Luna, $105. Dogecoin, $0.25. AVAX, $132. Shiba Inu, I'm still holding my bag of that. Polygon Maddox at $3.48. There's a lot happening on the Polygon Matic network, guys. I'm very bullish on Polygon. I'm going to be definitely adding more into my portfolio. I think this is easily a $10 to $15 coin next, you know, Q1 next year, guys. Easy without blinking an eye. Crows up to 1%, uh, guys, 0.87%. Keep scrolling down here. Algo, $2.40. Chainlink, $32. XLM, $0.43. VeChain, $0.13. That is insanely cheap, guys. Decentraland Manor. $5.35, Axie, uh, a do uh, dollar, I wish it was a dollar, <laughs> it was $160, Theta, $7, FTT, $62, my other favorites here, Hadera, $0.39, cents. that is so cheap, Sandbox, $7.53, could be a good entry point for those of you who are looking for that, The Graph, GRT, $1.06, another Web3 project, definitely one I'm considering, and my other favorites here, obviously, Eng is a great buying opportunity as well. It's very early, $4.13. Keeps growing down here to XDC. Banking coin, $0.10. Cents. $0.10 cents for an ISO 222 compliant project. That's happening in 2030. Got some news updates as well with that one. Uh, audio, again, Web3. Cool project. I'm looking into this one, guys. I might add it. Two dollars and fifty-two cents. And the other one I'm holding at the moment on uh, on uh, on sorry, that's available on Coinspot is uh, Reserve Rights, so RSR, and that is at five cents as well. And obviously, Reef. Uh, here we go. Is at two cents. Great buying opportunity. Let's get straight into the news. There is a lot happening at the moment. I'm going to get into Twitter as well. Is my Twitter up? Yes, it is. All right, so we've got here the Australian government planning digital currency launch as regulation looms for Bitcoin. You've got the federal treasurer for Australia, the person who controls all the money in Australia, basically did a speech yesterday or last night. And I'll show you that in a second. I'm not going to get into all of it, but obviously he's stating the Australian government is making moves to take Bitcoin out of the shadows by imposing new regulations. Well, we knew this is coming on cryptocurrencies while busy planning the launch of its own digital currency. The Australian government and Treasury in Australia is planning on launching their own digital currency. And I wonder who's going to be helping them with that. I wonder. Treasurer Josh Feidenberg confirmed the Commonwealth and Reserve Bank were not now working on a feasibility of a central cryptocurrency for Australia. Speaking to t today on today, the show, the morning show we have here, Mr. Frydenberg said it was time for cryptocurrencies to operate under the umbrella of considered regulatory framework. 
So we want to take cryptocurrencies out of the shadow, as you said. The government wanted the cryptocurrency exchanges and businesses to apply for financial licenses. This is happening, guys. Regulation is happening. But again, it's becoming mainstream, which is a good thing in my view, because there's going to be a lot more adoption and a lot more retail and institutional money is going to be flowing in. This is what I kept saying. We're so early. We're even before, you know, it's like the wheel being invented, basically, in like the dot-com era in 97. This is what's happening right now. So uh, we're so early. It's incredible. It just blows my mind. Anyway, so the government wants exchanges to get licenses. More than 800,000 Australians have owned cryptocurrency at least once since the rise of digital currencies over the past decade. So I'm one of them, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot more people, guys. Obviously, you've got here, again, more news articles here in relation to red flags and crypto goes mainstream. The world's ninth ranked cryptocurrency influencer, Rao Powell, the legend, says diversification is the best protection against sectors extreme volatility and the inherent risks of decentralized finance. Again, Josh Frydenberg, he keeps coming up. He's getting his, he's getting his, uh, what do you call them? His voting rights because the election in Australia is coming up next year anyway. And we've also got a huge, um, Ha uh, happening here in uh, Congress in the United States. There's a lot going on on Twitter at the moment. Yes, we're asleep in Australia. That's not loading. But I'm going to get into that now because I think there's so much here happening. All right, let's go into my Twitter. I'm at the Wall Street Bull Oz, by the way. And there's some incredible stuff happening with XRP, man. I think XRP is going to win this case because the SEC is just playing hardball and the judge is not going to like what uh, obviously uh, the SEC is doing. And uh, Ripple's lawyers have thrown a curveball at them, guys. So this is awesome. By the way, this is Josh Frydenberg. We're bringing in Australia to the digital age. The biggest shape up, shake up in Australia's payment systems in 25 years. This is all about um, modernizing the rules around how we transact every day from crypto to buy now, pay later, and digital wallets. 2030, again, comes up. This whole 2030 thing, the new world order and the new world regime, the new banking systems everything's coming in 2030 and it's starting in november next year with all the banking coins being iso 222 xrp xdc xlm uh iota and algorand the five coins the five banking so uh let's see what happens there and this is interesting here brian brooks the u.s applying the howie test for the truck driving 75 kilometers an hour or so uh, an absolute goat this is awesome this isn't during the congress um you know meeting today that they had whilst we were asleep in australia i'm going to play this yeah, now have so a listen to this man this is awesome suggestions well i uh i really appreciate that question that is the most important issue in the short term for the industry and and so let me just pick up where mrs wagner left off if the question is is the current test clear it's clear in the sense that we know what it is it's not clear in that it's a four-factor balancing test so i often think about what uh, like the this u.s trucking legend. industry would be like <laughs> If the truckers didn't know that the speed limit was 75 miles an hour, they just had a four-factor test of general safety having to do with how much sleep they got the night before, the overall size of their payload, and other factors. People need to know what the speed limit is. In my old agency, the OCC, what would happen is a bank would come to us with a new activity proposal, and we would give them an answer. We would either give them a non-objection, or we would not give them a non-objection, and it was very clear whether they would be allowed to access that. What happens in the United States is uh, you have a new crypto project and you walk into the SEC and you describe it in great detail and you ask for guidance and they say, we can't tell you and you list it at your own peril. So whether this comes from legislation that defines what is a security and what isn't a security or whether it comes from Congress in the form of legislative discretion to an agency to say what is a security, I would argue that a four factor balancing test is no better here than it is as truckers drive down the highway guessing what safe is yeah and so there's another one here as well that he mentioned xrp so the goat that is brian brooks us for president speaking xrp and common sense time to listen sec gov listen to this due to, to uh, for a moment mr brooks um if if you were king for a day and you were going to tell us uh here's what you need to do to to structure the regulatory framework in, in a minute and 39 seconds, tell us what that would look like. I mean, I can barely introduce myself in a minute and 39 <laughs> seconds, Congressman. Uh, I come back to the concept of parity. I don't know why we believe that incumbent institutions are risk-free and anything new is highly risky. So if I have a platform built on a blockchain that is doing lending, I don't know why it's so hard for us to say that can participate in our banking system. If I decide that XRP is a security 
Why won't we let it list on a U.S. exchange? The problem is we treat crypto assets differently from all other assets. And the answer is just recognize them for what they are. These are assets that represent some underlying activity. It could be a network. It could be an application. They have a value that people are willing to buy and sell at. Let them in. That would be my message. Let them in. Okay. How good was that speech? That's awesome. Now, XRP Ripple versus SEC. There's some awesome stuff that's had, you know, been submitted here. So Ripple files supplemental briefing regarding deliberative process of privilege. Then you've got a Jer- that's by James K. Filan, the legend. Obviously, provides updates regarding the case. And you've got Jeremy Hogan, another legend. I respect him so much. So attorney Solomon spitting fire once again. The SEC cannot have it both ways. If the Hinman speech was not a communication of agency policy, then any deliberation regarding the speech is not entitled to DPP protection. And that may be the phrase that wins the day for Ripple, guys. This is awesome, man. So if you go here, and thank you for highlighting this, Ashley Prosper there. So the SEC cannot have it both ways. If the Hinman speech was not a communication of agency policy, then any deliberation regarding the speech is not entitled to DPP protection. That attaches to any agency decisions regarding agency's decisions regarding how to present its substantive policies to the public. Gosh, this is awesome, man. So again, the XRP is going to be a huge project, guys. This is incredible, man. Ripple's going to win this case. Because the SEC is digging its heels in. They don't want to provide any information. And because my understand, my feeling, gut feeling is because they know they're going to lose this case if that happens. They're going to lose. Oh, it's just another thing for Ripple, man. Honestly, let's go, Ripple, man. This is incredible. And again, I tweeted out last night. Actually, here we go. Uh, three hours ago, sorry. I'm half asleep. Anyway, so Ripple is unstoppable. This is a tweet from Ripple again. We are continuing to engage with central banks globally on technical and policy issues relating to central bank digital currencies. I see why am I. One such project includes supporting the design and implementation of the digital pound in the UK. This is incredible, man. You know, they're assisting governments and financial institutions and central bank digital currencies. Ripple's going to be the number one. They will, man. Trust me. I've got a feeling in my gut about this. This is going to be huge. And it's literally going to be the cryptocurrency that's going to change the whole spectrum of cryptocurrency, the whole industry in itself. This is going to be the one that takes it to another level, guys, because it's going to provide so much clarity. This is going to set a big precedence, guys. And you've got here Goldman Sachs lists Ripple, Coinbase, as and Circle as the opportunity in payments accelerating use cases, guys. An overview of the digital assets and blockchain November 2021 report. Here we go here, guys. This is from Goldman Sachs. Check it out. Ripple, man. This is listed here. Banks join RippleNet to process cross-border payments in real time with end-to-end tracking and certainty. Available in 55 countries across six continents, RippleNet makes it easy to connect and transact across a robust network of financial institutions. With RippleNet, financial institutions can expand payment offerings into new markets that are otherwise difficult or expensive to reach. This is insane, guys. This is just, it's just coming, guys. Next year, November, I'm telling you, it's coming. It's actually coming, man. Honestly, fear and greed index, Bitcoin's up now slightly, and I've checked this 11 hours ago. It's up to 28. There's my top picks, guys. And uh, again, this is awesome, man. And I think it's really positive what's happened in Congress today because, again, they're providing and wanting answers about regulatory clarity and they're just talking about it now and they're having that conversation with members of Congress. And that's happening here in Australia. It's happening in the UK, Japan, all around the world, guys. This is happening. All right, so that's pretty much it for the news. Let's have a look at CoinMarketCap. Oh, sorry, before I get into that, Crypto CEOs request Congress provide regulatory clarity at hearing on digital assets. You've got Visa announces new crypto consulting services for merchants and banks. Iceland cuts power to new Bitcoin miners. There's a whole heap of stuff happening, guys. It's never a dull moment. What else have we got here? Bitcoin crash. Here we go. I just found this the other the other not long ago actually so bitcoin crash marked second largest single day in btc futures liquidation this year so this is probably the reason why the crash happened as well by the way so a lot of futures got liquidated 
you know, check this out, man. So only a few hours on Saturday, $5.4 billion of Bitcoin futures contracts were liquidated, draining the market of 25% of its value. So this is what I was trying to say yesterday in relation to the, why the crash was. So futures liquidation, guys. I mean, a lot of people, you know, backed whatever was going on there and they, they got burnt pretty bad. So anyway, there's a lot of positions that got hurt there. Coin market cap, guys. Here we go. Let's go straight into it. Gainers today is Wax is up 26%. Near Protocol, 24%. Kadena, 18%. Immutable X is at 18%. Cello is up 15%. Let's go total market cap here, guys. Let's just wait for it to load. $2.3 trillion USD, $103 billion in trading volume. BTC's dropped now to 39. I haven't seen that in a while. 21% Ethereum. Cryptocurrency is 15,300 in the green in the last 24 hours. That's awesome. Let's go into my portfolio. All right, let's wait for it to load. Here we go. Bitcoin sitting at 50,000 USD. It hasn't moved since yesterday, guys. It's just flat at the moment, which is a good thing. I think it's going to go boom soon. Uh, USD Cardano, $1.39 USD. XRP is at 86 cents, guys. I can feel something big is going to happen in Q1 next year, man, honestly. Dogecoin, 17 cents. USD, let's have a look at... Uh, I'm not going to talk about Shiba Inu because I'm holding that at the moment. $2.42 for Polygonmatic. I think this is going to have a big run next year in Q, uh, Q1. Tron Stellar XLM, 30 cents. Keeps growing down here. Decentraland Mana is at $3.74 USD. VChain is at 9 cents. This is so early in this project, guys. It's doing a lot for global infrastructure and trade, tracking. It's just, you know, already partnered with some of the biggest, you know, institutions and, you know, brands in the world as well. Luxury goods, food, all that kind of stuff. It's an awesome project. Hadera got an insane governance board um, behind it. You know, it's even like Boeing, IBM, IG, huge companies guys 27 cents hashgraph technology that's going to be a game changer theta four dollars and 93 cents i'm still holding my theta sandbox it is a great buying opportunity of five dollars and 28 cents usd at the moment btt is down one percent guys gala i'm going to be adding more on, uh, of gala at 49 cents this is very early guys gaming project amp neo holo chain theta fuel Ecomi as well is up slightly in the last 24 hours, which is good 5% to 005. Um, so I'm holding Ecomi as well. Uh, XDC again, 7 cents. I don't even need to talk about this. This is so undervalued. It's ridiculous. Just filling my bags with XDC. ANKR, let's have a look at this 11 cents USD. Uh, Sia coin, I'm still holding this because it's Web3 as well. 1 cent, guys. Got a big bag of that. Tail coin, UFO Gaming. Uh, it's very early. They've got some insane projects happening as well. So I'm holding UFO Gaming. And it is available on Gate.io and a couple of other exchanges, by the way, for those of you who wanted to know. That's where I bought mine, Gate.io. You can store that on whatever um, uh, wallet you like. There's a whole range of them anyway. So do your research, of course. Did you buy it? Winlink XYO, three cents now. This is a great buying opportunity. Um, I've seen price predictions in the dollars. And if not five dollars very soon, guys, you know, next year. So I'm, I'm loving XYO at the moment. I got in this very early. I uh, should link the video on where that, you know, when I bought that earlier this year, guys. So I've seen some insane returns. Reserve riots at three cents. Uh, we've got Reef, two cents, guys. I'm going to do a video on Reef as well, just doing a compiling of information so I can share that with you guys. But Reef for me is a real gem. No one's talking about it, which is I like. Uh, Vthor, Electronium as well. This has been around for a long time, guys, but it is part of the Digital Pound Foundation. So I'm holding my ETN just long term. Constellation Day, XPR, Acropolis, Ubix Network. Olympus is down as well to 509. I have got my coin staked. Uh, I'm receiving good rewards, um, but again, it's all based on the price of Olympus Ohm, OHM. And obviously, when you're receiving those rewards every eight hours, it's all based on the Ohm price. So, uh, you know, we'll see what happens with that. It's very risky. I just threw in a couple of hundred dollars to try it, but I paid that in gas fees, so it's probably not worth it. Let me know in the comments if you are invested in Olympus Dow. Meta Heroes up slightly in the last 24 hours, which is good, 21 cents. Big in the metaverse stuff, you can scan objects, even this pen or whatever. Uh, Pitbull, just a gameplay for me anyway, just a you know a gamble. So don't obviously do this if you're not willing to lose the money. That's basically what I've done anyway. So uh, again, very early stages. That's pretty much it, guys, in terms of the portfolio. Um, obviously, the ones I've, I tweeted out 
uh, this morning are the ones I'm going to be very bullish on as well because I think they're very early. So I'm going to go here straight away on Twitter. And again, please feel free to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and obviously YouTube. So uh, they're the ones that I'm on at the moment. So here's my top picks anyway. So there we go. XRP, XDC, VChain, Reef, UFO Gaming, XYO, HBAR, Yield Guild Games. I haven't added that yet. I am going to because I've seen insane price predictions for that. Gala, Matic, and Ocean Protocol from Web3. That's it, guys. Let me know in the comments below what you think of Congress's speeches today. If you're in Australia, what do you think about all this new regulatory stuff coming into crypto? Let's talk about it in the comments. All right, stay safe, guys. Peace. Bye.